The original Forza Horizon was such an iconic release back in 2012 and is still a blast to jump back into to this day, but unfortunately isn't available to purchase anymore. So unless you can get your hands on a physical disc and a system to play it on, you're out of luck. That is, until somewhat recently when massive improvements were made to Xbox 360 emulation. And now, Forza Horizon 1 is a completely playable experience on PC that in some way surpasses the original console release or even the updated 4K version. Luckily, it's pretty easy to get set up, but there are a handful of tricks to know about, so let's jump into this guide on how to get Forza Horizon running through Xenia on your PC. The first thing we need is, of course, the Xbox 360 emulator, Xenia, or Xenia, or Ksenia, however you want to pronounce it. This emulator is still in development and currently has two main separate versions, Master and Canary. Master is the more stable build, but lags far behind on features and fixes that the more updated and experimental branch, Canary, currently has. So at the time of publishing this video, Canary is the only version you should be using to run Forza Horizon. You can find the link to this in the video description, and all you need to do is download the small zip file here. Once downloaded, you can extract the zip to any location of your choosing. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for the purposes of this tutorial. Now you can open the unzipped folder to find the Xenia Canary executable alongside the license file. Double click to open Xenia for the first time and you'll be presented with this blank window. Now just close out of the program and you'll see that it has created two more files in the install folder, a log file and config file. If for some reason these files didn't appear, you can just right click in the folder to create a new text document, then title this document portable. That's it, just leave it blank. And now you can reopen and close Xenia and it should create that config file for you. The .toml config file might show for you as a blank icon and will ask what program you want to open it with when clicked on, and in this case, choose Notepad. And then you'll see the icon change and we'll be able to view it in Notepad. Don't worry if your Notepad looks different than mine. I use a different program called Notepad++, which is helpful for pointing out the line numbers, but you absolutely do not need this. Now, technically, this is all you need to do to set up the emulator. If you have a game file ready to go, you could boot it and it will probably run. However, especially for Horizon, we do need to make some tweaks to get the game running and looking a lot better. So let's dive in to this config file. With this open, we have a few things to look for. The first being right at the top on line three, APU max queued frames. This defaults to 64, but can be set as low as 16. I would suggest leaving this at 64 unless you notice any delay in the audio while playing games, in which case you can try dropping this to either 32 or 16. I've noticed though that it seems to be a bit more stable for me at 64 and I don't have any noticeable audio delay in Horizon. We'll get into this more in a bit, but Horizon may likely still crash from time to time on this emulator and the audio tends to crash for me a bit more often often with this delay set lower. So leave it default unless you notice audio lag or run into other audio related issues, in which case feel free to experiment with a lower value. Now the next setting we're looking for is the internal display resolution on line 90. This defaults to 720p, which is setting 8, and for Horizon, this is fine. You won't get the game to run at a higher resolution through this setting. This just tells the emulator that you can run a higher resolution if the game itself supports that. But Horizon only runs natively at 720, so you can just leave this at 8, or bring it up to 16 if you plan on playing other games that might support 1080p output. If you do want to upscale Horizon's resolution, you need to scroll down to lines 182 and 186. Draw resolution scale X and Y. Make sure you're always changing these to matching values. If you set them both to 2, that will give you 1440p output. 3 gives you 4K output, and you can keep going all the way up to 7 
which basically gives you 9K resolution, but no PC can reasonably run that. So if you are looking for a resolution bump, bring this up to two or maybe three if you have a really beefy computer. With my 4080 and 13700K, I can get 120 FPS stable at setting two, which is 1440, or a rock solid 60 with setting three. Be aware that in some games, this setting can cause visual bugs, but I haven't noticed any issues with it in Horizon. All right, now let's move down just a bit more to lines 209 and 210. The GPU setting tells the emulator what graphic system to use, and when set to any, which is the default, should generally end up using DX12, which typically performs better and has better game compatibility. If you want to force this on though, just type D3D12 in place of any to ensure you're always running DX12 graphics. You can certainly experiment with Vulkan if the emulator isn't working for you, but I haven't had much luck with it in Horizon. For now, DX12 seems to be the way to go. Now the setting just below this, GPU allow invalid fetch constants, should be set to true. If this is set on false, car interiors and mirrors will tend to bug out. But for me, it's set on true by default. Now we get to some interesting bits here, running the game at higher than the native 30 FPS, which makes the game feel so much better. Scroll down to lines 268 and 269 to see your VSync settings. By default, these will be set to true and 60 FPS, which will cause the game to run at 30 FPS. Now you've got a couple ways of managing this, so if you're following along step by step, just pause here until I go through all your options. To start, you can totally just leave the game at the original 30 FPS by not touching these settings. If you, for example, would rather prioritize resolution over frame rate, or don't want to deal with the minor graphical bugs that will happen at higher frame rates, just leave this as is for the original experience. However, most of you probably want to bump this up. To do this, you can simply increase the VSync frame rate setting to double the frame rate you want to play at. So changing this to 120 will let your game run at 60 FPS, or setting this to 240 will run the game at 120 FPS, if of course your hardware is capable of that. And it's as simple as that for most people. Unfortunately, some setups seem to run into issues with this, so there are alternatives to still increase your frame rate. You can turn VSync off by changing this text to false, which will let the game run uncapped, but this will likely cause issues with flickering UI and HUD elements, among other problems, so you still need to limit frame rate somehow. This can easily be done in your graphics card's software. For NVIDIA, just right-click on the desktop to access the NVIDIA control panel, then manage 3D settings, program settings, and then look for and add Xenia. Once added, scroll down to max frame rate and set this to 60, 120, or whatever else you want. You don't need to double the desired frame rate here, just set it to whatever frame rate you want to play at. And this should be an acceptable workaround if the Xenia config file isn't working. But if you still have problems, you can try forcing VSync on through this control panel here as well, which might help. So ultimately, for most people who just want to play at 60 FPS, all you should need to do is set this to 120. But I think Xenia plays a bit funky with some G-Sync or FreeSync or any adaptive refresh rate kind of display. So you might need to tinker with this to get the game to run at your desired refresh rate without that obnoxious HUD flickering. All right, and with that somewhat lengthy section done, we only have one more setting in the config file to look at, and that is mount cache on line 362. Make sure this is set to true. Otherwise, you're going to run into a bunch of crashing and texture loading issues. And with that, we're done with the config file. With this, you should have the game ready to run at your desired resolution and frame rate while also minimizing crashes and other bugs. And there's just one more thing we need to do before actually jumping in game, and that is to grab the patch files. You can find the link to these in the video description, then just click this download link right here. Inside this zipped folder will be a patches folder, and all you need to do is copy this into your Xenia install folder. Inside the patches folder are game patches for a ton of different games. You can leave these all here, they're tiny files, or delete them, up to you. 
because all we need for Horizon is the Forza Horizon patch file. Open this with Notepad again, and we'll see three main categories. Disable Motion Blur, Disable Depth of Field, and Disable Shadows. Motion Blur is broken on Xenia, so you will need to turn this off by setting this text to True. Otherwise, all the cars are going to have these weird, non-motion blurred boxes around them. You can also disable shadows and DOF if you're running into performance issues or graphical bugs, but I've left these on without issue. And with that, it's time to boot Forza Horizon. Now, as much as I would genuinely love to give you more instruction here on how to obtain a copy of this game, emulation and distribution of abandoned software is still in a legal gray area and I'm not going to support piracy here. I own a physical copy of this game and dumped my copy of it to my PC with an Xbox 360 disc reader. If that's not an option for you, which I totally understand, I can promise you that it is very, very easy to use the search engine of your choice to find a method that works for you. The game file is about seven and a half gigabytes when compressed for those curious. Now, however you obtain your copy of Horizon, you should end up with a file about 8.5 gigs in the .iso format. And now it's time to boot it up. Just open Xenia, click File, Open, find the Horizon ISO, and boom, you should be up and running. Now we've got a few more things to check and tweak here. To start, make sure that the patches applied text appears at the top right of the emulator window. If for some reason this isn't showing, go into your config file again, scroll to line 275, and ensure that apply patches is set to true. Next, you can full screen the game by pressing F11, and with this set, we can now press F6 to enable some post-processing effects. At the top, we can enable FXAA, which I would only suggest if you're upscaling the game, otherwise it just muddies the image too much. And here you can also enable AMD's CAS or FSR. If you're running on the native 720p resolution, FSR is your best option to get a more crisp and sharp image. But if you upscale, say to 1440 or 4K, this will have a smaller effect and CAS might give you a better looking image. You can further tweak these settings with the sliders below, press F6 again to close the window, and you're all set. For one more bonus tip though, you can head back into your GPU's control panel to force anisotropic filtering on at 16x to get much sharper textures, especially for the road and terrain without much of any performance hit. And this should be all you need to get Forza Horizon running well on your PC. Now let's talk about some common bugs you will run into as well as some troubleshooting steps. To start, it's not uncommon to have the visuals kind of bug out and show all these weird bright green and purple flares with a kind of foggy pattern all over. And if this happens, you can simply press F5 on your keyboard to reset the cache and clear it right up. You might also run into audio crashes, where the game is still technically running but the audio starts rapidly looping. This is where that max queued frames setting comes in. Feel free to experiment with different options here, but for me, I did still get the occasional audio crash, no matter the setting. Again, it's worth saying that this is all still in development, and you will very likely experience some game crashes. For me, it happens about once an hour. Luckily, Horizon's autosave is amazing, and the game boots up in literally 10 seconds, often without any lost progress. So it's a much smaller issue than it might seem. Now, if you're still running into problems with the UI flickering, Xenia's VSync does eliminate this. Or, in a worst case scenario, you can also just run the game at 30 FPS, again with the VSync on, to make sure you don't run into any issues. But for most people, this shouldn't be an issue at all. Now, speaking of frame rate, this game was not meant to run over 30 FPS, so if you are running 60 or higher, expect some minor visual goofiness. Things like the crowd moving really quickly, or the background car camera looking like a Jason Bourne movie. Luckily, at least with this camera in most most menus, you can just press X to switch to a stationary cam. Everything else should run normally though as far as the frame rate goes, cutscenes play just fine, the car physics aren't altered, overall it's really nothing major, and the benefits of a higher frame rate heavily outweigh these few small issues, at least for me. 
Now, you're going to run into a few more minor bugs while playing on the emulator in its current state. For example, in photo mode, the focus button doesn't actually work. Car lights can shine through solid surfaces, your car's thumbnail in car selection windows will often be bugged, and sadly, you cannot put decals and vinyls on cars because it bugs out the paint texture. However, you can still paint the car. The paint booth lighting is buggy, especially with certain finishes, but it'll correct itself in the open world. And if you do have a weird texture following you, a quick reboot will solve that. Just expect minor little goofy things like that at this stage, but that's really all I've noticed in my time playing. Overall, it's a entirely playable and very enjoyable experience. Again, the upscaled resolution and better frame rate more than makes up for these issues to me. It really is amazing to experience this on PC upscaled at 120 frames per second. And if you're worried that your older budget PC won't be able to run this, I got this running on my Steam Deck at roughly 30 FPS. So really any halfway decent PC from the last maybe five to seven years should have no issues running this at at least 72060. Now, before we wrap up, we do have one more thing to talk about, DLC and mods. You can technically play this game with all the title updates and DLCs if you're able to get them. However, it will break the motion blur patch, which only works on the vanilla game without updates. So I personally wouldn't mess around with getting the DLCs yet until that patch works. And it's a similar story for mods. It's a bit of an involved process that I won't get into here, and you can't use the mods with certain DLCs or title updates, but to point you in the right direction if you're interested, the XE mod is a great pack for the game that adds over 60 cars and more engine and drivetrain swaps, so feel free to look into that if you want to. And folks, there you have it. Forza Horizon 1 running on PC, upscaled and over 60 fps and it is truly a sight to behold this is such a great game it has so much personality and character to it and i would recommend this to anyone especially if you've only played the newer horizon games it's cool to see where it all started and how the franchise has changed over the past decade the xenia emulator is always improving too and hopefully these crashing issues and minor visual bugs continue to get ironed out out over time to make this a truly flawless experience on PC. Or maybe Playground can just cash in on an easy remaster. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.